Hello everybody, welcome to this special episode of the Idle Pack Talk Show. Today we have a very interesting lady who is an entrepreneur, but she has dabbled into a few things. She's been a pilot, she is into healthcare, and she finally landed herself into business. Uh, we are here to talk about finding her purpose, having gone through these various careers. So please welcome Suda. Hello. Hi there. Hi, how are you? I am well, thanks. We started talking to each other a few days ago on Instagram, and here we are in the studio. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. How was the drive? Oh, it was long. It was oh, long. <laughs> we get I live closer the to the airport. Yeah. So it was quite it a way, but there. I believe um, it will be worth it. Yeah, you made it here. So I made anyways. it. <laughs> okay. So you have an interesting story from what we were saying before um, before this uh, live session. Um, you have been to quite a bit. Uh, you have been through quite a bit of um, um, what would I say careers. Well, yes, you know, I'm the I'm the type of person that I would like. I like to follow my childhood dreams. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, my mother. Mm -hmm. She worked in the airline industry for years. Right. So as a young teenager, I always wanted to work in the airline industry. Mm -hmm. I did. Right. Right. Um, I've worked for a few airlines mm -hmm. and I think I've washed, I've gone through every area right. of the airline industry mm -hmm. from an agent to a supervisor, to station supervisor, to ground security coordinator, right. um, you know, to flying planes mm -hmm. um to be specific the Cessna 172 aircraft mm -hmm. you know was trained on um you know also i wanted to become an actress right you know so i i can remember um these guys ipop that Remember came to calgary mm -hmm. and um they you know they did a few auditions for persons to go on their training in mm -hmm. vegas and i I went, they liked me, I went to Vegas, and so mm -hmm. I was signed by two agencies um, for acting. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to, but the funny thing about it, those were the two things I wanted to become, mm -hmm. an right. actress and, you know, working with the airlines, right. you know, eventually being a, wanted to be a pilot. But then I realized that it wasn't my passion. Mm -hmm. My passion was actually working with people with mm -hmm. mental health, mm -hmm. which, you know, I found my way into, right. and actually being, owning my own business. Mm -hmm. Because only my own business, I'm able to control the service right. or product that I provide. Right. And that was my frustration to begin with, mm -hmm. with having a product that wasn't that good. Okay. Right. So be before we get into into all of that, we want, I just want to bring you back a little bit mm -hmm. to 2016 where you, yeah. when you immigrated to Canada, I believe. What what was it about flying? I know you've you, you've worked in the in the in the in the industry, but what was it about flying that that got inspired me. Yeah. a young Jamaican girl to um, want to come here. Working for. in the airlines, yeah. mm -hmm. um, your own aircraft right. ev almost every day. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I can remember I was working at Thomas Cook flight. And these are um, these Airbus are the, the big ones that uh, I think they carry over 300 people. Right. For me, it, I was at the gate. I was in the jet bridge. I was taken off the jet bridge and I was, um, you know, took off the br jet bridge and the aircraft took off. Yeah. And it was so amazing how a turbo jet yeah. could take off and right. stay in that year. For me, it was just amazing. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I have to be a pilot. I have to know how this thing works. Right. I have to fly, fly a plane mm -hmm. one day. Mm -hmm. And so I came in 2000, came to Canada in 2016 mm -hmm. for the sole purpose in so, training yeah. to be a pilot. Yeah. Right. So I went to Springbank, started my training. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. The experience is it's amazing, mm. but it was not my calling. Right. What was it about it that you didn't feel? Yeah. Um, so I like to be doing things that I believe is um is beneficial to someone else and mm -hmm. also myself. Right. Okay. Right. And while I was doing my training, part time I was working with persons with mental health, mm -hmm. um, specifically autism. Right. And I saw how my impact in their lives mm -hmm. change their lives right right um their behavior in a positive way how happy they would be mm -hmm. 
and how in turn how happy i would be yeah. you, yeah. right yeah. so i realized okay then this is what's more filling for me <laughs> than just flying a plane or people looking at me and like oh my god you do this are you a pilot right to help somebody else was more filling for me, mm -hmm. you know, than, you know, being a pilot. Not saying being a pilot isn't fulfilling. Of right. God, no, it is. Yeah. It's a lot of work, a lot of discipline, a lot of dedication. Yeah. I commend every single pilot, airline, mm. um, whatever you fly. Could yeah. be Cessna to the Airbuses. Doesn't matter where you fly. Mm. I commend and I have utmost respect for every single pilot. But for me... When I see someone that is struggling, mm -hmm. um, have a smile on their face at the end of the day because yeah. of what I can do for mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Right. That's a whole different. Yeah, that, that's a different, different feeling kind for me. Of feeling. That's right. Mm -hmm. Was was it was how was the transition from from flying, doing working in the airlines, and then transitioning into healthcare. in healthcare? Yeah. Um, and doing what you do was that it was that a natural easy transition for you, or did you have to? <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't hard. Okay. <laughs> um, because it wasn't, no, it wasn't hard at all. <laughs> you know, um, because, okay, so I work, I still, a, I'm, I'm still a part of an airline, yeah. right? I work for an airline here in Calgary um, as a customer service agent. <laughs> so what I was doing, I was going to school um, to fly. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was flying the Cessnas for yeah. uh, school. It's almost like, you're done school right pretty okay. much that's how i f you know that's mm -hmm. how i felt right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. did did you did you did, did a part of you go with that transition um a little bit mm -hmm. a little bit because for one i can remember coming from school just flying and um you know doing a great landing mm -hmm. Or a challenge in landing. Like, say, for example, I have a crazy crosswind. Mm -hmm. I'm able to land safely. Mm -hmm. I would drive home feeling super good about right. myself. Because I know that, okay, it was a challenging day, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I think that part where you feel like, you know what, you can do anything. Yeah. You yeah. did it. Yeah. That's that feeling, you know, mm -hmm. probably is still there. Mm -hmm. And that's why I believe that when I have more time, Mm -hmm. I will go back and I will, you know, yeah. finish what I started. Right, then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then um also you have dabbled into act acting, like you said that. Um mm -hmm. how's that or oh, how's that going oh, for you? Oh acting is more hard than anybody would think that I oh, thought. Really? I thought that acting would be something, you know, you just kinda like pretend. Yeah. But no. Mm -hmm. Just like every other career that you have to study and be in depth mm -hmm. right. and be disciplined. Acting is the same way, or even more. Yeah. You know, and um, it's exciting when, I think for me, it's exciting when I get on an uh, audition. Right. You know, but then you go and you realize, man, you could have done this so many different mm -hmm. ways, and probably they choose somebody else. And, mm -hmm. uh, but it's very hard. It's a lot of hard work. It's, it's hard work. Yes. Just <laughs> just out of curiosity yeah. for me, auditions, do they give you a certain role to play? Do you pick a role to audition for? Most times they will give you the role to play. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, most times. So they will describe your role. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing with acting, you have to you have to be that person mm -hmm. in that role. And sometimes your personality doesn't, doesn't allow you yeah. to. Right? Um, I can remember there was a role that I was given where I'm supposed to be acting mean like i just killed my husband yeah right mm -hmm. and i'm supposed to um act all surprised and sad and then when nobody's looking all happy i could not do it because mm -hmm. it was not my personality i could not act evil mm -hmm. right yeah so to become an actress or it's, it's hard work yeah. or an actor it's very hard work yeah any yeah. projects that you've been in again just being curious oh god um so many um i was given two voiceovers uh, those are easier ones mm -hmm. because then you just have to think about what the company would like you mm -hmm. to sound mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. right? So, but um, there was a spef uh, sorry specific role that I was given, um, Falling from Grace. I don't know if you know that movie. No, I'm not a big movie person. Yeah, <laughs> Falling from Grace. Yeah. And it was pretty much um, me telling my husband that, you know, I do not want to be a lawyer anymore because mm -hmm. I have to defend all these criminals. Okay. Yeah. And so I had to cry, and there was so much um, emotion is in mm -hmm. it. Um, so that was my that was that was kind of interesting. That was yeah. my favorite thing to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take us through the process. Like, how do you put yourself in character? 
Um, for me, yeah. um, for a sad character, I normally think about something traumatic that mm-hmm. happened in my life. It may right. not be the healthiest thing to do mm-hmm. because who wants to remember traumatic experiences, mm-hmm. right? But um, it helps me. Or I think about something horrible happening. You know what? They're never healthy. How I think about <laughs> getting sad. Yeah. But I have to think about something that would make me cry, mm-hmm. and um, then it comes. You know, it yeah, just it comes, comes out. Naturally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we've talked about being the pilot, then get into healthcare, then acting, acting and then now you are an un- entrepreneur. And I had to Google that maybe because I'm not a, a lady. <laughs> Did you know what hosiery was? No. Okay. So on the same page, yeah. <laughs> I understand. Um, I'm like, I, first of all, I got the pronunciation wrong the very first time I was trying. Is it hosiery? Hosiery. Hosiery. But you know, it's called s- different things: stockings, yeah. hosiery. Right. It all depends on where, which part of the world you are in, mm-hmm. and you know, you'll kind of you know reference it to whatever. Okay. You want, yeah. So you landed yourself uh, as a business lady mm-hmm. selling hosiery. Um, um, Amongst the many things that you've been doing already. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. you're not only selling, you're making. Yes. So You're designing. The hoser business started in 2012, actually. Mm-hmm. It's not yeah. when I came here. Okay. And um, it started out of frustration yeah. of having to wear um, stockings that rip. Okay. Okay. So I've been in the airline industry for all these years. Sorry, the guys I, who cannot understand that. But anyway, we get your point. So you are required... Um, for most airlines to wear hosiery with oh, your skirts. Yeah. And one of the most embarrassing things for me would be going to work and have a rip hosiery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Rip stockings, yeah. as we call it. Now, either you will find out that you, you're wearing a tear stocking or, or a or customer <laughs> would probably outline right. it to you like, right. hey, you have, you, you know, something is wrong with your stocking. And mm. that's embarrassing. You have to have a positive, strong mindset to go mm. through your day without thinking about that stocking or yeah. you can buy another one mm-hmm. and carry it with you but at the end of the day all this money is add up yeah. mm-hmm. it's not going to be it's not benefiting mm-hmm. you right um i was in london for a few years and uh during that time i would um you know purchase these um tights from marks and spencers which are very very good and so i would buy them take them back to Jamaica and start wearing them. And my coworkers were like, oh my God, where did you get those from? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, I can buy some for you whenever I travel. And that's what I would be doing. Right. Mm-hmm. I remember someone saying to me, why don't you just buy them and sell them? I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. So I normally would buy these in London, bring back them to Jamaica and um, sell them to my coworkers. Mm. Then I realized that my market was expanding from just the airline employees to immigration and customs Mm -hmm. and, you know, persons who would work in the gift shops, right? One day, um, my friend said to me, why don't you just manufacture your own hosiery and sell them to stores? Mm -hmm. I was like... That sounds like a very interesting idea. And call them Suda, light support, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. stockings. I'm like, hmm, okay. And because I'm that type of person that I believe that anything can be done, okay? Yeah. Anything at all. Yeah. Once it was done, you know, yeah. once somebody, you know, have a, succeeded at doing it, yeah. you can do it too, right. right? And so, you know, I went back to the UK. I went to this company called Pretty Polly. Um you know, with the hope that they can manufacture for me. Mm-hmm. But having it manufactured in the UK wouldn't be too smart because of the exchange rate. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if I would, you know, because to the pound, to the Jamaican dollars, mm-hmm. man, I'd, like, I would <laughs> pretty much make nothing. Yeah. So I decided to go to the US because, you know, the exchange rate was a little bit better. Mm-hmm. So I went to the US and um, also I went to China. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, went back to the US and this gentleman said, listen, I can... Um, arrange a visit with you know my company in China to mm. make these for you because you want quality we'll have you do quality right mm. um, so you know it's been years trying to perfect mm-hmm. the product um, there's a lot of uh, there was a lot of um, what do you call it trial yeah. and failures yeah. right different persons making it um, and you're given your specification how you want it mm-hmm. And so, because of that, you know you know what you're looking for. Right. So, whenever anybody comes and like, okay, then we have it ready for you, it may not it be the right thing. Right. I, I guess my, my question, I'll just bring you back a little bit, is 
you identified uh, a, okay. an issue with the product. Mm -hmm. What was it about that product that you wanted to fix? It tears easily, mm -hmm. so it would rip. Yeah. So yeah. you put it on, and uh, probably a stocking, a normal stocking, will last you probably mm -hmm. like a week mm -hmm. okay. if you're lucky. Right, yeah. I wanted to build a stock in that lasts you for years. Mm -hmm. What did you have to change? Um, to make, to, just to come the, up with a just the like quality, that? just the quality, just the material. Okay. Right, mm -hmm. it all comes down in the material that you use. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's it. Just the material right. and the thickness. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, how's that venture? I mean, you you said you've been in it for a couple of years now, and uh, you have you have what twenty seven stores in the city and counting and counting. Yes. You have a bunch of stores in Jamaica. You, you have, That's right. How has that been running such a large um, business? Operation. A business on a large scale and internationally too. Um, it takes experience mm -hmm. and a lot of research. Yeah. Right. Um. It doesn't come overnight. Right. This is years of trying different things. Okay, which which shipment company works best? Mm -hmm. um, you know, how are you, you know, make sure that you're good with customs, your paperwork, mm -hmm. you know, whatever agent you have in China or wherever mm -hmm. you made the stockings, are they efficient? Mm -hmm. So it just takes a lot of years of doing your research, trying different yeah. people and see which one works. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. that's it. Uh, I'm sure you've had like challenging times. Like, how did oh, you yes. how did you like you know turn that around and make something positive out of those those moments? Um, challenging times. I've had challenging times financially, mm -hmm. especially with COVID the other day. Oh boy, yeah. You know, everything was kind of placed on pause. Yeah. Um, you just have to have faith mm -hmm. and believe in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And once you believe in what you're doing, you will make a way. You will right. find a way out. Yeah. Yes. Because guess what? If you believe in what you're doing, you will not rest mm -hmm. until you figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's pretty much what yeah, I've been doing. You've been doing yeah. mm -hmm. So right. what are the positive highlights in the business venture? Well, you know, you're your own boss. All right. And if you're dedicated, if you're disciplined, and if you know exactly what you want, you will be successful, right? right? Um, the great thing about business is that um, if you love what you do, you'll well, of you, well, you, you have to love, love what you do. <laughs> right. There's not a time on it, right? So you'll be working on your business twenty four seven. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you financial independence, mm -hmm. and it will give you the opportunity to help other people as well. Yeah, right. It paves the way. Um, to provide employment or advice mm -hmm. and, you know, all these little things, no, right? Yeah. I, I, I think money is a very important component when you're thinking about starting a business or operating a business, like you're going down to China to mm -hmm. contract a manufacturer. You're talking to people in the U.S. and everywhere else. It takes money. How did you raise the capital that you needed to start this? Did you work with banks? If you did, how easy it is? How easy it is to get, get money for people who are attempting to start a business i mean new business yes um, yeah how, how, how well um from my experiences i've i know that um the banks especially when it's a new business you yeah. have to kind of have every i dot and every t mm -hmm. cross for mm -hmm. them to even look at you um how did i finance my business to be honest with you mostly out of personal funds mm -hmm. okay. and um like a loan from families or friends um and the good thing about loans from family and friends is that you know most times they don't come with interest mm -hmm. that's you good. know there but be they lenient. become with strange <laughs> relationships though um it all depends on who you're dealing with right. you know you try not to get um financially entangled with persons with um shady character right. or with people who you know um they need that money right yeah. okay so if i you know borrow from someone that that's all that they have. Mm. You, you you know, it's risky, <laughs> right? Yeah. So you try not to be in those situations where, because with business, in the business world, no. it can go either way. Yeah. Right. Right. So you try to, you know, probably get it from persons who, they're, they're not in need of it. Mm -hmm. And People they too believe in your bit. Yeah. A little bit to spare. Type, People who type have a little thing, bit right. to spare. That's right. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so you you didn't have to deal a lot with the bank, which no, which actually, probably not at all is better. <laughs> fortunately, fortunately, no, no, yeah, okay. yeah. 
Um, I also do understand, uh, well, it's that business has proven to be um, very uneven playground, right? Where, where you, the strong eat of the week, mm. you're getting into a, 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 a product that has been in the market for a long time i know it's quite challenging you know mm-hmm. you know finding your way right for so how does how does a young black woman or any woman for that matter you know um survive in this mm-hmm. kind of environment well you just have to be different yeah. okay now if you're going to compete with a product make sure that something about your product stands out mm-hmm. and it's going to be beneficial for whoever is going to buy it Okay, mm-hmm. I can't be compi- competing with A, with my A, and everything is the same. Mm-hmm. Person is going to ask you, so why should I buy your product instead yeah. of the others that's already there? And that's why I ensured that I cre- I made a product yeah. that I needed something in. And I believe that um, majority of persons shared the same, shared the same frustration I did. Mm-hmm. And they wanted that thing from the product mm-hmm. and, you know. Mm-hmm. That's it. Just know what people want. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Do you, people care that that you when you go out to meet people to talk about your business? Mm-hmm. Do people care that you're a woman? Do people care? Um, I, I, I imagine you say mostly to women, right? Yeah. Do people care about the kind of product that I you're I think selling? only women. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Men buy hosieries too. Well, you know what? We live in a country. We live in a society nowadays that you know people are free mm-hmm. to wear whatever they want to wear. Yeah. Weird, so, um, if a man approaches me and like, oh, I want some of your stockings to wear, hey, go ahead. No, I, but you as a business person, you really don't care. You just oh, want your no, no, no. I just want whoever buys my, my product. To enjoy the product, right? Is to enjoy yeah. it. That's You're it. not there to police who wears no. or who does yeah. who wear your product. But mm-hmm. I, I think my question wasn't, yeah, that my question was, how do people approach? How do other um, people approach yeah. you as a woman wanting to? to get into a venture like this like if you go, when you go to china for example to talk well, to them yes, how do they um, interact with you as a woman because i know some men have very um traditional men have very different mm-hmm. uh the feelings when they when they're talking to yeah, yeah. talking oh, business is, is with a woman mm-hmm. so I, it's like how 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 did you deal how did it do you deal with all of that i think for china it was more my my age yeah that exactly. yeah, you know too, yeah. my gender mm-hmm. um you were younger i was yeah i was okay. much younger and i you know <laughs> much younger so i went to the airport and um the agent that came to meet me at the airport he was shocked he was right. actually he held up the sign with my name on it and i walked towards him and he didn't even he's like mm-hmm. he were he, he, he wasn't even paying attention <laughs> That I was standing because. right in front of him. Right. He was looking. And I'm like, hi, I'm Suda. Yeah. And um, he's like, Suda. I'm like, yeah, that's me. He's like, oh, I was looking. He told me. Wow. It's like I was looking for a much older, older, older person. person. Right. Right. Yeah. Because normally it's older person you, that they would go you know, to them. You know. Exactly. But I'm like, nope. No. It's me. Wow. Okay. And the funny thing about it, I think because of my age as well, they were very um, helpful. Yeah. They wanted to help. They yeah. wanted to be a part of it. Yeah. Because I think a little part of them, they were impressed. Right. So, you know, that was an advantage yeah. for me. But yeah, it was uh, it was a great experience. Mm-hmm. So um, you've been through all these things. You've been a pilot. You've, you're in healthcare still. You're acting. Um, you're running a business. Um, where, like, when is it enough? Um, (laughs) I think it's enough now. (laughs) Um, no, I think, I think now, because what I've realized is that, you know, they have a saying, um, jack of all. Yeah, I wanted to bring that up. Yeah. Master of none, yes. What what are your thoughts on that with your hands full? I, I think that's it. I think for me, um, everything that I've done, everything that I'm doing, Mm -hmm. Um, these are the things that makes me happy. Right. And so I will, you know, go further in them than to seek out new, seek out you new know, stuff. adventures. Yeah. <laughs> I call it adventures, yeah, yeah. but yeah. But still serving yeah. two, two, three masters at this time. Are you prioritizing any one of you them? You just have to, con- you just have to um, manage your time properly right. yeah. and wisely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see what needs, uh, you know, um, what needs your time more or, yeah. you know, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking about finding yourself and finding your passion, something that you're very purposeful about. Um, is it is it is it fluid? Does it change with time and with age? Like, do you like 
find other things interesting or is it like something that was static you've always had um the urge to be an actress an entrepreneur and i think um my passion is to serve okay Okay. in whatever capacity in whatever capacity Mm -hmm. and um if you look on what i do with the product Mm -hmm. i wanted to serve i wanted to Mm -hmm. fulfill that um need in people that was missing when it comes on to a product that Mm -hmm. was not good yeah right um, with healthcare, same thing. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure that I'm adding to these guys' lives. Yeah. Right? Um, flying plane was just, I think it was just an ego, like, man, mm, I, got I can do this. <laughs> 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 I want to do it. I want right. to fly a plane. I want to be a pilot. There's not a lot of, um, I've not seen a lot uh, of black female, female pilots, pilots yeah. around. Mm-hmm. And I want to be that different one. Right. So, yeah. you know, um, being an actress, uh, it's just something that seemed fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it is still fun, you know. So, yeah, I do not believe that I would be, I w- I'll be thinking about any other thing mm-hmm. with age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just believe that I'll be perfecting well, what yeah, I already well, know yeah, and yeah, what I've going. already started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what, what prepared you for this, for the business piece? What prepared you for this? I, I mean, you're pretty young and you started this you look young. <laughs> um, I'm assuming that <laughs> <laughs> and and you started this in 2012 right so what prepared you for this business world like i have a natural drive yeah mm-hmm. you know um i love life i love um i love challenges mm-hmm. you know yeah. and i love to in you know i i like i like to look on th- things that a lot of people say you know i can't right and i like to prove people wrong mm-hmm. i like to you know, is that your motivation? To yeah, I, I, I think that motivational drive for yeah. me is, you know, I went, I conquer, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. <laughs> that type of thing, right? right? So I think that's that what, um, you know, carried me every mm-hmm. day, mm-hmm. really, mm-hmm. right? That yeah. drive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Proving people wrong. <laughs> I, I it it sounds honest. like you have a long list of people you're trying to <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even say, you know is, what? Is it, is it I more? even say people i would say society Yourself. it's more like society right yeah. because society have all these stigmas and mm-hmm. all these understanding of what a woman or yeah. a black woman yeah. should mm-hmm. be or yeah. you know the stereotypes yeah. right and i and i kind of want to move away from all of that like mm-hmm. listen yeah. and i want to be an example for persons that look at me and like oh she looks yeah. like me yeah she you know it. and she can do all of that yeah. i can right. do it too yeah. right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's yeah. You 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 have um like we mentioned earlier you have stores in Jamaica mm-hmm. you have stores in um in Calgary is it do you have in other cities or just Calgary? Um, well we're working on other pro well oh, yeah, projects yeah. rather. Okay. Yeah. I, I uh, t- to that point I guess was, are there any cultural differences in terms of running a businesses in Jamaica which is where you're originally from and Canada uh, which you've been uh, Calgary which you've been part of uh, a resident for a little bit. Um, differences. Um, let me see. Hmm, not really. Not really, yeah. No. So you find the business concept is the same? In Pretty much the same. You know, yeah. um, no matter what, if you approach someone with a good product and you mm-hmm. can prove to them that it's right. a good product, they will take it. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. But you have to prove to them that, listen, I'll be benefiting yeah. the same way mm-hmm. you'll be benefiting mm-hmm. from it as right. well. Because at the end of the day, every people business want person profit. wants to benefit. Right. right. right? right. Mm-hmm. So if people were to, where would people get your product? Well, okay. So we have them in um, Marlboro Mall. Marlboro Mall, yeah. We have them in Market Mall, mm-hmm. um, Chinook, mm-hmm. TD Mall. We have them in a few pharmacies. Um there's a uh, big pharmacy. I think a lot of person know a pharmacy in Airdrie mm-hmm. Center yeah. Street. Mm-hmm. That's a very huge pharmacy. They also carry the product. Wow! I wish I had a list, but yeah. um, just a lot of different pharmacies. Yeah. Yeah. There's a pharmacy at Springboro yeah. that carries the product as well. IDA Pharmacy um, and McLeod. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just. Um, and they have the name Sudo on it, right? And they have the name. It's called Suda Light Support Stock. You you're also working on a website? Yes. Well the website is um up. It's um still, you know, 
I believe every website is work in progress yeah. because yeah. you will always yeah. be yeah. adding Changing stuff. Yeah. 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 But it's um, www.sudastockin.com yeah. or .ca, whichever yeah. you like. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, like. Right? Um, uh, yeah. Again, just out of curiosity, uh, this is this is for me. <laughs> um, I own a store mm -hmm. and you would like to sell your product in my store. Give me a pitch. Okay, so... <laughs> I have a product that um, I've been supplying the airport with. I, I no longer would like to go um, to walk and to supply them. But I believe that if your store carry, I could, uh, you know, direct those customers to your store yeah. so they can buy the product. Mm -hmm. What is it about your product that um, makes so it different from? Hosiery's been, uh, Stockings been around for God know when the longest time. <laughs> and um, persons has always been um, dissatisfied with the product. It's just that they've never seen a better one. Mm -hmm. Now I've taken my time to create a product that is, um, it's like an upgrade from the normal hosiery. Yeah. However, the price is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Because my, my, um, my ambition is to serve is to make sure that people are happy. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't have mm -hmm. to make a great margin. I just need to know that a product that I create um, is benefiting persons. Right. So the price is pretty much the same. Yeah. It's just an upgrade. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So one last question. If you had to go back in time and advise a little girl, a pseudo, growing up in Jamaica, what would you tell her? You can become anything you want to be. Right. Anything. Anything at all. You just have to be focused. Be disciplined mm -hmm. because ambition is not, it, it, it's, it's not, not the that's, not, that's, yeah. not, that's mm -hmm. not it. That's it not all of it. More. There's more to it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You have to put in a little work and that's where the discipline comes in, mm -hmm. right? But anything you want to be, you can be. Mm -hmm. Just work hard at it. Yeah. And sometimes it doesn't go the way you want it to go, yeah. but just ensure that you've put in everything right. and then you can be proud of yourself because it's not every factor that we can control mm -hmm. in life. God, I would like to be the president. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> is it possible? Yes. Yeah. But will there be a lot of um, situation that yeah. will stop me? Yeah. Yes. I mean, if I try, if I, you know, made a try at it and I don't become, I mean, all the factors that I can control, but at the end of the day, I tried mm -hmm. yeah. and I put my all in it. And mm -hmm. that's the important bit. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, Siri, for coming. And this was a fun conversation we had from. And, uh, we were we were able to explore your passion and all the things you've been through and we're grateful for your experience and we mm -hmm. hope a lot of young girls can learn from you and you know follow our footsteps and you know don't be discouraged you know and uh, for our viewers please go on our page we're going to have her link on our video so you can go to our website and you can visit the stores and look for our product and you know experience it for yourself please subscribe on our channel and we hope you can come back for more this is the idol pack talk show and we were joined by suda higgins thank you very much <laughs>